Dr. Clifton Pudry, uh, who is a courtesy professor at University of Oregon, um, uh, where he participates in the instruction of an ethics course for graduate students. He was also a professor of biology at the University of California, Santa Cruz, where he also served in several administ administrative capacities as a rotating program director for developmental biology at the National Science Foundation. He developed the minority supplement initiative that was implemented widely by the directorates at NSF and later at the National Institutes for Health. He was the director of the training uh, workforce development and diversity division at the National Institute for General Medical Sciences. Uh, he developed a new research design to understand the efficacy, efficacy of interventions and thus inform future planning of student development activities. He has also developed the Native American Re Research Centers for Health program in collaboration with the Indian Health Service as a senior fellow in the science education department at HHMI. He led the Gilliam Fellowship Program and an experiment for adoption adaptation of the UMBC Myhoff Program. Dr. Pudry is a native of the Tonawanda Seneca Indian Reservation in Western New York. He earned uh, both a bachelor's and a master's in biology at the State University of New York at Buffalo. And he received the PhD in biology from Case Western Reserve University. Uh, at this point, I would like to invite Dr. Pudry to make his presentation and welcome. Thank you so much for taking the time to be with us today. Thank you so much for the, uh, for the invitation. Thanks to the, the group that put this to, together. Um, this has been a rich and stimulating conversation. And the presentations thus far has given me, at least, given us uh, a, a lot to think about. Um, it's, uh, it's really an honor to be part of this activity, uh, along with people today who, who I hold in the in highest esteem. Um, <clears throat> my path, like, like many that we, we've heard of in the last uh, uh, different sessions, uh, was to, my path to leadership was definitely not intentional. Um, that is, as a young faculty member, I, I never imagined myself as a, a leader, uh, even in roles as, as small as, as chairing a, a small committee. Uh, see, I learned early on that the committee chair gets stuck with, uh, with all the work. Uh, and more importantly, and this may be um, cultural, um, I, I believed that uh, people coveting uh, leadership were exactly the kinds of people who shouldn't be leading. So um, I, I didn't want to be, uh, be coveting a, a leadership uh, kind, of, uh, kind of activity. But uh, over the years, I did get appointed to various uh, uh, positions, uh, department chair, acting dean. I even served for several years in a, as an associate vice chancellor um, and the offices of admissions, financial aids, the learning center, equal opportunity, and the colleges were reporting to me. Um, these were not part of my expertise. They weren't even part of my, my interest, to, 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 to be truthful. Um, but I saw leadership as a, as a necessary service. Uh, to me, uh, leadership was a, was a duty to perform, which is something that, that I should do. Uh, lucky for me, I had uh, uh, excellent staffs. You know, as, as, as mentioned, um, the, the staffs are, are often where, where the, the, the leadership uh, activities uh, can take, take place. Um, I, I was asked, did I have role models um, who, who are Native American? Uh, I'm not going to go in, into much of this, but um, at the time that I was growing up uh, at both my baccalaureate and master's, uh, there were no other Natives in the sciences. And as far as I was aware, there were not even any Natives in the, in the whole, uh, whole institutions. Um, uh, when I was already a faculty member at Santa Cruz, uh, my colleague Frank Talamantes uh, introduced me to someone he went to grad school with, Frank Dukup, uh, a Hopi. And so he was the first uh, native that, uh, that, that I had ever met that was a, a scientist. He, in turn, um, uh, introduced me to Don Schopenek, 
um, who was at Haskell Indian Nations uh, 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 Tribal College. And um, I, I went there to visit with him because it happened to be a uh, school where my grandmother was sent <clears throat> um, as, a, as a small girl during the uh, uh, boarding school days when, when students were, were, were taken from their, their, their tribes. Uh, <clears throat> over the next several years with Don and, and uh, and, and, and Frank, um, we collectively knew five natives in, in science. There are quite a few more in engineering, but in terms of other scientists, it was at that time only about five. Uh, I'd like to describe a couple of situations that may have helped shape my ability to stay the course. Uh, and, and just for context, I'll tell you, so we'll go way back, uh, I was raised on the reservation by five different families from the time that I was from, from age one to age five. Um, and Needless to say, we were, we were very, very poor. Um, I was good, but, uh, but not a great student. And one event in, uh, in a seventh grade class is one that uh, I'd like to tell you about. Um, the, the, it, it, may have made, it may have made a, a real difference in, in my life. Uh, the teacher was talking about weather. And he'd asked a question to the class about water movement globally. Well, no one answered. Uh, many of us, and kind of our, our, our head down. Um, and since there was a good long silence, uh, I, I raised my hand and offered an answer. Um, after my answer, he said, uh, that's incorrect, but good thinking. I, you know, I was nervous speaking up uh, uh, to begin with, and, and I got it wrong. But, but that was okay. Um, in the way that he responded to me, and, and including the way that, you know, he, he just looked, uh, maybe he smiled, I'm not sure. But uh, there, there was something in the message. Uh, he indi indicated that it was okay to, to make mistakes, to be mistaken, as long as you were thinking. As long as you were thinking. Uh, I believe that that uh, message was a, <clears throat> excuse me, was a, a pivot point in, in my life. Uh, I'd like to jump ahead uh, quite a bit to, uh, to, to graduate school and my advisor, um, Professor Howard Schneiderman. Uh, Howard uh, just exuded the joy in life. He was curious about many things. He was excited about new ideas. Uh, and he made grappling with the problems of the day seem you know, just like an exciting venture. Um, he was also highly respect respectful of others. My skills at the time um, at finding fault in others uh, vastly ex exceeded my skills at finding value. Uh, he was patient with me. Um, if I thought something was wrong um, or someone was wrong, he challenged me to find four, perhaps hypothetical, but find four situations in which they might be correct or, uh, or find four ways uh, that something that I believed uh, might be wrong. And he asked me to really think and, and articulate things. Question assumptions. Question assumptions, especially your own. I actually even question other people's assumptions as well. Uh, our, our lab at that time was, uh, was very diverse and, and inclusive. Um, um, people uh, international, people of different races, uh, genders, it was uh, um, not only uh, diverse, but it was, uh, it was, I felt very inclusive. Uh, so much so that I, I didn't, I wasn't even aware of it. I didn't recognize it as, as special. Um, as one example, uh, Lowell Davis, uh, African-American who taught me electron microscopy and he, he later went on to become a professor at Syracuse. Um, I had no awareness at the time of underrepresentation of, of natives or African-Americans uh, or, or how special um, uh, he, he was, um, because he was part of the team. Um, he, he was included, included was the, the, the norm. Um, Howard Schneiderman was curious. He enjoyed ideas and working those ideas with people around him. He, he would say, I'd rather have my mistakes revealed here uh, among colleagues, among friends, uh, than, than out there uh, in a review in a, in a manuscript. Um, I, I don't know if he was, um, what uh, David Asai uh, uh, mentioned in, in an earlier um, uh, talk, uh, whether he was a, a collector or, or, or a nightlight, um, but he was certainly someone for me to, to emulate. Over the years, there have been many individuals, some on the panels here, uh, <clears throat> that, uh, uh, that I've met and admired, and, and there are people that, uh, that I would hope to emulate. And, and of course, there, I've met others along the way who are on the do not emulate list as well. Um, I'd like to fast forward to my years at, uh, 
at NIGMS, uh, where my colleague, uh, Yvonne Maddox, an African-American, encouraged me to take the Kennedy School of Government course for senior leaders in, in government. Um, while I wasn't excited about doing that, uh, she, uh, she was very persuasive, and the experience uh, opened my eyes in many ways, and I, I have been ever grateful um, for, for her advice. I, I had a great relationship with my boss, my supervisor, uh, the director of NIGMS at the time, Marvin Kasman. Uh, Marvin could be uh, very direct. Uh, just as Professor Tapia is very direct. Marvin could be very direct. And after hearing my plan for a postdoc program that would benefit minority serving institutions, uh, he told me that's the dumbest thing I ever heard. But he allowed me to bring in an ad hoc group to advise on the idea. And at the end of that meeting, which came to, uh, you know, a couple months later, he told the group, when I heard Cliff's idea, I told him it was the dumbest thing I'd ever heard. But after the conversation today, I changed my mind, and I think it's worth a try. Uh, that, uh, that idea uh, became um, the, the Iraq the program, postdoc training program. And my point is that uh, Marvin, uh, you know, as, uh, as direct as he was, uh, he had an open mind. <clears throat> and, and he listened, uh, he argued, but he listened and he kept an open mind. Um, in, my, in my division, uh, in, in order to make a, a memorable point, we began to describe the bottom-up approach to improving representation as, a, as the fix the student approach. Uh, and no one likes the idea of being fixed. So we looked um, to, to move beyond fixing the students and suggest to fix the faculty and fix the institution um, as, as ideas. I was told that the, the way to uh, influence is to keep things as three ideas. So that's why our message was, uh, um, you know, fix the students, fix the faculty, fix the institution to get people thinking about it. Uh, and to soften the message, we called the uh, fix the faculty part faculty development, and we referred to institutional change. Um, I now wish that we reframed that issue differently. Uh, you see, while it, while it did let us emphasize the importance of faculty development and institutional change, we weakened the continuing importance of student development. I wish we'd emphasize the importance of learning, of growing, and of having a growth mindset. Enforced change, you know, fixing someone is offensive, but enabling growth and development should be natural expectations, expectations of us that are students and expectations of us that are uh, our mentoring students. Uh, so let me just summarize the three lessons learned in, in, in my life, uh, just pick three, uh, is number one, it's okay to make mistakes as long as you're thinking. I think this keeps us, keeps us going, makes us, uh, so that we're, you know, we're not afraid of, of thinking, of, of trying. Uh, two, always question your assumptions, and you can question the assumptions of others. And three, emulate people who embrace the joy in life the curiosity and with humility and respect for others. And I'll break my, my rule of three and one more, uh, model, model and nurture uh, a growth mindset. Uh, I was asked to uh, uh, mention a couple of things. Where are we now in, uh, um, in, in preparing leaders? Um, one of my observations is that there are numerous courses available, many online courses for leadership development. And I'd like to hi highlight two very di different objectives that I see in the leadership training. One is getting there. So part of the training uh, helps people to, to, to achieve the positions that they're looking for, getting there. The, the second thing is serving well. So two different objectives to leadership training. One is, to, is getting there, and the second is serving well. Uh, these have different motivations, I believe, and they lead to different kinds of leaders. Courses abound with strategies for networking, for presenting oneself, to influence, to get ahead. Fewer courses help develop or reinforce the commitment to service, to doing a good job in service of a cause or ideals of a team or, uh, or organization. Uh, what do we need to do going forward? Uh, <clears throat> it's not easy, but I think we should change expectations. We should emphasize service as an essential part of the job. We should avoid incentives like the plague. 
we should change the job description. Unexpected rewards um, may be a technique, may be a useful technique, uh, unlike incentives, unexpected rewards um, can highlight values. Uh, one that I keep seeing on the TV this time of the year, the Walter Payton Award, uh, which, um, which uh, rewards uh, people for the service, the public service and, uh, and public good that, uh, that they've been doing. Um, finally, are there, there are questions where research is needed? Um, um, I'll say that I don't know. In my ignorance, I'm curious about which of two motivations for learning, mastery versus performance, is more important, more desirable for leadership, and whether those two approaches, mastery versus um, performance, uh, whether those approaches are ingrained in us, are those are those teachable? Are they are are they uh, coachable? Um, it's important that uh, leadership development be evidence based. And, um, and, and I think that the new tools may be needed for, um, for, for rigorous uh, research. Um, I, I think I'll leave uh, other, other comments uh, for discussion. Anyway, thank you very, very much for uh, allowing me to be a part of this, uh, this conversation. Thank you.